Patch 7.0 is finally on the horizon as the developers have indicated that we should see a release very soon. Here's the official statement from the forums. With update 7 locked in terms of content, we're now just waiting for the patch to pass certification to publish it to all of you on all platforms. We were hoping to get the update out this week, but the certification process is taking slightly longer than expected this time around, so next week is the current target. When I purchased the season pass, I was not expecting it to go quite like this, but it's not too surprising with all that has gone on in the world over the last few months. Four phases were originally promised to be released during the first year. Phase 1 was advertised as coming out a few weeks after the game launched. Well, we are definitely behind schedule. With four phases planned, one would expect a phase to be released every three months. That means we should already be into the first month of phase 2, but we are still waiting for phase 1 to wrap up. I am cautiously optimistic that the dev team will catch up over the next few weeks and things will get back on track. I believe the phase 1 content was staggered this way exactly for this reason and there's some data mining evidence that supports this. Let's quickly go over all that's coming out with patch 7.0. We have the Imandra map, formerly known as Africanda, which will feature one new vehicle, the 2's 108 Warthog. Interior customization items, which are the bobbleheads and stickers. Two trial maps, which should be right on King and Lost in the Wilderness. And what is worded is a whole bunch of improvements and bug fixes. They go on to mention that patch 8.0, which is already on test server by the way, will be an update featuring support for the Logitech TrueForce G923 wheel for both PC and console, as well as more bug fixes, including the fix to watchtowers on co-op maps. Besides that, they point out that this will be a completely free update, so hopefully more content is added to existing maps, because it's unclear whether the three new contracts for Michigan will be included in this update. Data miners have already confirmed the Chevy Apache Scout truck is part of patch 8.0, and will be available for purchase from the store, which is kind of disappointing because I was hoping to unlock it through exploration. There's also a whole section on modding, and it's good to see that they officially state Console mods will be coming, they just can't give us a real time frame. They go on further and get into a modding reward system for PC modding, which I'm not going to cover. If this is something that interests you, go and check it out on the official SnowRunner forums. With a lot of upcoming features being data mined and information being leaked months in advance, I find it interesting that the devs made special mention that they will be actively working to make data mining more difficult. So information like this doesn't leak so far in advance of update release, but we will see. That brings us to the final segment, which is information gathered from various sources on the unknown elements, things that have been data mined and exist in the game code, but might change slightly, like the Africanda map name being changed to Imandra. It's important to note that the following is just speculation based on data that already exists, but it's completely unknown as to which phase or what the final name we might see. So far, the track record for this information has been very good, with most of the speculation being confirmed with the latest release. The release of the Ford F-750 on a Russian map was a bit surprising as this was expected to come much later. If you listen closely to the season past trailer, they mention several new Russian maps as part of the Phase 1. So far, we have Lake Kovid and Imandra. It will include an additional winter environment set in Russia greatly expanding your playground with several new maps for your rides alone and with your friends. The Yakutia region is thought to have been planned for Phase 1, which would make sense as it would add two more maps to the Kolsky region, along with at least two new Russian vehicles being the Boar 45318 and a mysterious new scout vehicle simply named Otto. It is unclear now if this will be released with Phase 1, or if this content will be pushed off to Phase 4 as part of a new expansion. It is interesting to note that logging trailers already exist in the game code for the Pacific P-16, which could be a sign of things that will be coming up for Phase 2 Canadian maps. The maps should feature new vehicles from Caterpillar, the 770G, and the TH-357. What makes things confusing is that there is some coding for Wisconsin missions already built in, the speculation is that these may be part of the new trials which are said to contain new maps. Some other new vehicles that may be coming in Phase 2 are the International Paystar 5600 TS, 
a new Western Star 4900 series truck, a Freightliner FL120, and a new truck simply called C500, which many are hoping will be the Kenworth C500. We have also recently seen new upgrades to existing trucks like the GMC MH9500, and Patch 7.0 will be bringing the all-wheel drive upgrade for the Twin Steer. If you go back to the original Season Pass preview, you will notice that the Twin Steer and the Ford CLT9000 are seen driving around the Kolsky region. This may be an indication that a new diff lock and all-wheel drive upgrade is still coming as part of Phase 1 for the Ford CLT9000. That being said, the other trucks that are currently missing these vital off-road upgrades are the International Transtar 4070A, the Royal BM17, and it would only make sense that the Pacific P16 gets its all-wheel drive upgrade to make hauling those log trailers much easier to accomplish. Well, that's all the news and updates I have for you this month. I hope to have more updates in next month's edition, and I am optimistic that the dev team will catch up on the content release schedule. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe today so that you never miss a video. As always, thank you for your support and see you next time.